Leafs talk. JD Bunkus, Sam McKee, Josiah Bosch, game, whatever. No mute. Uh, <laughs> that's game. Sam what McKee. Yeah, no Sam. Yeah, just, we're getting we're getting a lot of fumbling here out of the gates. No Sammy, but <laughs> let's restart. Uh, the, wonderful, <laughs> the wonderful Ailish Forfar is here filling in for the kid. Uh, I gotta tell you, Leafs lose. There's definitely a Samsonov conversation that I want to have, mm -hmm. but oh, like we got to start with the one thing, which is the main thing, and that's Austin Matthews is now sitting at 68 goals, and this has become extremely, extremely real. This is awesome, honestly. Like I'm, I don't know. I, I listened to your show enough to know you're in the camp of just like let Matthews cook. And uh, today we were talking about it on our show that it had to be a multi-goal night because then you give him a chance next week or this weekend without having to think, well, you know, what are the odds he's going to do it? So a multi-goal night means we're one step closer to 70. It's basically all we care about right now other than health yeah. and, you know, good habits. But yeah, he's scoring at an amazing pace and it's at whatever he wants. I'm going to put the puck in the net now, no problem. And his line mates are looking real nice up there with him. So, yeah, yeah. It, there's a lot to come through it. But I, how can you not be having fun watching Matthews get closer to 70? It's the yeah. one of the best stories in the NHL. Yeah, that's that's my position. I, I can't get over how I, – I saw – I wish I could remember who had the tweet because it, it's correct. It's that they should just cut the Hart Trophy this year into five pieces and give a chunk to everybody. And just say, hey, yeah. every you guys, five of you all go home and you have a little piece of this. But yeah, Matthews now, 51 even strength goals, which is uh, only been done seven times in NHL history, according to uh, my pal James Myrtle. It hasn't happened in 31 years. He's on the precipice Crazy. of 70 goals, with only two of them being empty netters, by the way. Like, two of mm -hmm. them are empty netters. I don't feel like there's been a ton of just cookie chasing from Austin Matthews. I think that this team is needed... Uh, the vast, vast, vast majority of these goals. And yeah, I'm just not going to stress myself out about him playing an extra 20 minutes potentially in the final game of the season. Like, yes, he's played the most so far of his career. To me, he does not look like a guy who's about mm -hmm. to burn out or who hits 70 goals and then coasts in the postseason. Yeah. If he does that, he'll be criticized then. And then you can mm -hmm. play the what-if machine and have all your tears about them pushing him for this milestone. But as it's happening, I just think, damn, you got to enjoy it. And like mm -hmm. he rips the first one into the back of the net. It's just like that's in his money zone. You know he was going to put that one in. But just <laughs> a couple great plays by Max Domi who – Oh, yeah. Like this is his dream. Max, Max Domi, I, did you – he's the Maple Leaf forever after this season and this stretch with – I oh. hope so. That's me nope. getting FaceTime. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Uh, you're popular. <laughs> you, you have your FaceTime. Like, That's literally you never I, happened I, to me I, too. I don't, I don't even know what just happened. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Rookie on Lee's talk. But yeah, I think okay. the, the discussion of, of Max Domi is hilarious, right? It's like now mm. he's like the second most beloved Leaf. He fights yep. tonight. He looks so damn good on that top line with Matthews. And the funniest thing is, between him and Bertuzzi, like they're both playing for a contract and who better mm -hmm. to play with than Austin Matthews where you set him up, you look good. And he's going to say, well, right. I want to play with this guy. Right. Like, I, I think it's, it's a really interesting discussion about who is going to be the fit come this postseason or, or this off season. And I just don't want to see Max Domi play for another team. He's, he's, mm -hmm. he's found it. He's home. I totally agree. Uh, I would like to believe that these two parties are going to be able to figure this out and that it is going to be mutually beneficial to me. Like again, Max, this is perfect. This is a dream. The guy hates shooting the puck, even though he's great at it. Uh, the, the one play he makes, he made two beautiful plays and I just like batting down pucks mm -hmm. on the one goal, just like the hand eye coordination, the elite play by him and then finds Matthews for the one, the second one, that pass that he makes to Matthews just basically bounces it off him. It's like as though Matthews doesn't even need to be, a guy who just had the 51 even strength goals. Domi puts that in off of anybody, the second mm -hmm. one. But this is what Leaf fans, I think, have been waiting for, is a player who really understands what it means to be a Toronto Maple Leaf. And I know that this fan base and social media, like they love to joke about like the passion havers, but Max Domi gets it. Max Domi mm -hmm. understands it. He gets the market. He gets the moment. He understands what the fans want. He he gets that his dad was able to create a legacy off of that style of play. And tonight, you know, 
him just dropping the gloves immediately upon Matthews getting touched. And I don't care if it's a rookie, like dumb mistake, dumber mistake, hitting Austin Matthews or leaving FaceTime on your computer as a rookie tonight. <laughs> I don't know which How one. How am I supposed good. to turn it off, bud? I'm popular. I don't know. That's, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> those are the agents calling for Max Domi. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Say this but about him on Leafs Talk. A hundred percent. I just, I'm so happy that Toronto has a guy who flat, he has the passion. Like he truly does have mm-hmm. the passion. Yeah, I think uh, a god, and then they show his dad all the time. Look at this! Like, how are you not smiling bigger? I know <laughs> Ty is like a stoic dude, but yeah. I just I want to see. You know what will make him smile? A big playoff moment, and that's say, what's playoffs. all that's missing right now. Like, all that's missing is seeing what Max Domi does when it matters, and he's been like through some playoff battles before, and I think that's how we're evaluating like Tyler Bertuzzi's worth. Is oh yeah, he's shown up in the playoffs. So if Max can do what he's doing in this round one and, and and be a physical guy and play alongside Austin Matthews. Like it's, it's done. Hand him the money. I, I do wonder how this affects or how Mitch Marner's thinking about this because he got a moment when Domi was in the penalty box to play with Austin Matthews again. And I was like, Oh, he's going to want to like prove it, like get himself back up there on that top line. But I think it's an interesting discussion. Like they, he's not playing with, you know, Matthews right now. I wonder, you know, Mitch can, can take those things personally, but I'm curious your thoughts. So I thought about this tonight too. I I don't know how you couldn't. Uh, These guys played junior hockey together. And yet I don't know how tight they are. I'm sure that they're friendly. I'm sure that they're buds. But I don't think that it's something like you would think that for two guys that played in London together, like remember when Domi was in Phoenix and it was Dvorak Mm -hmm. and a lot was made about like friendship, friendship, friendship. Oh, we haven't gotten that. Like Max is just like a universally popular guy on the team. But I do wonder yeah. if there's like a little bit of big brother syndrome here where Max is the older guy, Max the face of London, Marner was the guy that came in was the more talented guy. And then all of a sudden big brother shows up and Matthews loves him and he's mm-hmm. feeding him and he's doing exactly everything that he was doing before. And listen, I this is it's only human nature for I think Mitch to be a little envious. Of course, he's probably thrilled that Matthews is having success. Of course, I think that he genuinely does just want the team to win and that he will do whatever it takes to win. But, you know, these are two guys that dominated five on five this season. He lost his spot Mm -hmm. due to an injury and he comes back and you see your buddy having the time of his life with somebody else and doing exactly what he was doing, if not better, with someone else. Don't feel the grace about it. (laughs) You know, Mm -hmm. you got to be a little envious. And all I got to say is there's no way a single Leaf fan on earth isn't thinking, all right, Ailish Borfar talking about giving Max Domi all the money and give him a lifetime contract or whatever. Like, let's say they go and offer Max Domi four years by four million, four years mm-hmm. by four, five years by four, who knows, maybe even a little less. Sure. You want to do that or you want to do Marner 12 million bucks for mm-hmm. six to seven uh, with 100%. a full no move clause? What is it, July 1st, we can start kind of having this discussion? Mm-hmm. Like, I think this stretch of play of Max Domi and Tyler Bertuzzi has kind of been eye-opening. And I don't want to get into the Marner discussion talk, and I'm sure we'll have all off season to think about playoff performance. But yeah, there's a big difference in terms of who's going to make what amount of money. And Max Domi has been not even like, you know, what's that meme where it's like, oh, we've got whatever at home. Like, it's, yeah. he's, why he's have, filled that Why have role. hamburger when you have steak at home? Oh, yeah. But like, he's filled that role. It's, it's not like... Marner light like he's doing exactly what you would want from Mitch mm-hmm. Marner in that role and bringing a physicality that Mitch Marner doesn't have and maybe a little bit of the passion in the heart that mm-hmm. that you don't see as vividly when you watch Mitch Marner play so I think people are falling in love with Max Domi and they deserve to be and we'll talk about all that offseason stuff after the playoff and see who performs better because that's really when it's going to matter right I think if you pulled Leaf fans over 32 uh, Max Domi, probably number two most popular player. Fleefs fans mm-hmm. under 32. It's probably Nylander. Uh, but mm-hmm. yeah, it's damn close the way that this guy's playing right now. I just, I love having Matthew surrounded by two guys that, that play with that edge and that energy. And I love that Max Domi has had a total feel for the moment. And when he was given this opportunity, he has just absolutely taken advantage of it. That being said, okay, so the Marner side of this is, hey man, you are still a, critically important player and you can actually also forge your identity outside of Austin Matthews. Mm -hmm. And 
I thought that he made one nice play tonight on the second goal for Tavares. Tavares scored twice. The first one's a little bit of a joke, right? It's like five <laughs> seconds into the hockey game. And I went, is the e bug in tonight? Like that looked like the, a kind of goal that we I let in. Upstairs from our show <laughs> yet. Like we hadn't even gone from the bottom studio at sports yeah. to the top studio. And I'm like, it's right. two not like one, one, what happened here? So we missed it. <laughs> but the second, but, yeah. but the second play, like Warren makes a nice little chip play at the line. Just good patience, gets it to Riley. Riley drives the puck in deep and then finds Tavares mm -hmm. in front of the net. And he's in a, again, uh, a honey spot for John Tavares. And I went, you know, did you see who the... was on the ice for this one here, JD? Yeah, Matthews flying in late. No, but they had Matthews, Nylander, Tavares, mm -hmm. Riley, and Marner on the point. Mm -hmm. So they put all the big guys out there and little it worked. Stack. And it was little interesting. Stack chasing the game. Mm -hmm. I don't it mind. Good it. though. Yeah, I, yeah. Like, I like when they're going to do that. They're going to load up that line. That's the thing for Marner is he's going to get opportunities to play with Matthews throughout the postseason. Mm -hmm. Like, that's obvious. He's going to have power play, which, again, still not cooking and clicking. they got to figure that part out. He's going to get his chances. But to me, that would be the challenge that I'd be issuing to Mitch Marner is, hey, man, who are you outside of Austin Matthews? Can you be someone outside of Austin Matthews? Can you create a second line that's dangerous, that does score two goals tonight? Because to me, that is going to be the formula for success in the postseason anyway. And then it just becomes more a question, I think, of how do you fit Nylander in through all of this? He jumped up on the second line for a bit tonight. Yeah. I thought there were moments where he looked really frustrated. He's clearly a little snake bit, but I like the way he's, he's moving. He's kind of the odd one out right now, it feels like. Yeah. you know. And I felt bad about the Robertson goal. You know, he's been chasing at 100 points, and he's kind of right there, but but the Robertson goal would have given him an assist. And, you know, yeah. that's Robertson going offside on his own goal. But, yeah, yeah this last play. stretch, yeah, the last stretch has been – uh, I feel like he's pushing, like he's he's tr he's trying to find it. And mm -hmm. I mean, all of our attention is on how great that top line looks. Um, where I do like the idea of spreading out the talent. Like I think in a playoff performance, when you have three lines that are almost evenly matched or almost evenly dis like distributed, that's hard to play against. And if you have home ice advantage or you don't, and they're probably playing the, the Panthers at this point, you can kind of toggle with that. But I've liked the idea of it. I just feel like the one person that's kind of suffering a little bit from this has been Willie not finding himself for the last couple of games. But I mean, you're William Nylander making all this money. You're going to have to find a way to, to have that breakthrough. Like, you know, Matthews is having with two guys that are not even signed to this team after this year. Right. Don't you like that? He looked pissed off that he looks oh, kind of yeah. a little frustrated. I'm like, cool care, you know, care about a hundred points, care about trying mm -hmm. to find it. Cause I think the last two games, where they've done the line splitting up, he's actually looked a little lost. Tonight, to his credit, I will say he was more snake bit than I thought not yeah. present. Like, he was really around the play, and it, it felt like, oh, man, he's he's going to rip one in tonight, and then he just didn't end up doing it. But I, I like the way he's trending. Yeah, no, I think showing Willie with a tiny bit of emotion or, mm -hmm. like, a care factor, that's those are the things you want to see. Like, there's three games left, right? Like, it's kind of hard to, to make, like, sweeping – decisions on on who wants what but like yeah i do think maybe 100 points would be something you want and as long oh, as you're yeah. not going way outside of your like you know your, your scope of play like yeah i think over these three next games willie really wants 100 points and matthews wants 70 and it's too bad marner got hurt because he probably wanted to get 100 for the first time but yeah i, I think willie peaking and getting 100 matthews getting 70 like i know we're having this debate about rest versus versus like you know getting these things i don't think that these guys are not going to be fired the hell up when they get 70 goals and they walk into day, day one of the playoffs. Like I can't see that being a hindrance to success. I think it only going to make them feel more confident. It's going to make them feel fired up for each other. And, and like, why would you not want that to be the mentality going into day one against probably the Panthers? Totally agree. That was the, the one funny thing about tonight, the Leafs lost. And I was kind of like, Oh, ho hum. And the Leafs lost control of, their own destiny for jumping the yeah. Panthers. It's like actually a significant loss. And it just goes to show you how terrible this playoff format is and how <laughs> it's really checked out one of the biggest markets, the biggest market in all of hockey uh, in terms of caring whether or not they're be, going to be getting an extra home playoff game. Like that is mm -hmm. not a good sign for the NHL. Okay. So you said, um, you know, you don't want to be making big sweeping decisions over the last couple of games of the season. Sam's but, off. Oh Yeah. Do you think you left the door open tonight for Wool? No, I don't. And okay. I saw your tweet, and uh, I know you, it's a good way to capture audiences, but like not even leaving the cool. door you open. Try, like, you're accusing me of just trying to get clickbait? Clickbait. Yeah. Katie clickbait bunkus. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, but true. when I read it, I thought like I didn't even have that thought while I was watching. I just had the thought of like this game sucked for Sammy. Like he he mm. he looked like old time Sammy for a little bit there. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think I've just been through too many of these conversations of is Wall getting himself in there? Is Samsonov the guy that I've mentally told myself Samsonov's the guy, and I've become able to believe in that. But mm. I'm not letting him off the hook for tonight's performance. I will say it's a like. It's a Thursday night against a team you've played three times in the last 16 days, and they suck, and they don't really have anything to play for. And, I mean, I'll say there were some really bad defensive uh, plays by the Leafs, like Geo, 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 Geo. Mm. Brody couldn't get the puck out. And, like, that's on everybody kind of being sloppy. So I would give Samson off a bit of that sloppy this for sure. It didn't change my, like, comfort level of game one Sammy, but – Old habits creep back in. That's that's scary for Leafs fans that have all this trauma of this season mm -hmm. of Ilya Samsonov, but not enough that I'm like seeing Joseph Wall in the background yet. Um, but yeah, they, I mean, the next three games, you want to be going into the playoffs with like a good level of confidence. Like Sammy wants another game, I'd think, to erase this one from his mind before game one. So uh, he'll probably get one next week, of course, and, and hopefully it won't be like this because it was it was just a sloppy performance from a lot of people. We got two sloppy Sammies tonight. <laughs> we got oh, poor the... Sammy McKee is also <laughs> sloppy tonight, folks. <laughs> He's a slop fest back in High Park or wherever he lives. Yeah, sloppy poor Sam guy. McKee, sloppy Ilya Samsonov. I hated yeah. Samsonov's game tonight. Like, yeah. he made the one really nice save on uh, the shorthanded cross ice play where I mm -hmm. thought, okay, that was a big one because I think the game was tied in that moment or the Leafs were down one. No, it's right here. Uh, yeah, Leafs are down nice. one. He makes a really pretty cross ice save. Bang. Yeah. Keeps him in the hockey game. Thought it could have been a real trouble if the Leafs would have fallen down two goals here. Yeah, Leafs let up a bad goal at the end of a period. One that really isn't his mm -hmm. fault. You're right. Brody bobbles one out to start the hockey game. And yeah, Geo with the like, I'm too old to see at night anymore. <laughs> uh, it was so and, bad, man. Like, oh, yeah. God, I don't, yeah. it felt for him. It, it was really, it was, it was really bad. I was like, oh boy. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, no, that's no, no. Do, do, do. Yeah, <laughs> uh, could not have guy. teed him up. Like going downhill right to his backhand. Yeah, uh, it scared me a little. I'll admit it. It scared me. I the the last goal in particular, where it just like that was a poo poo platter. Like mm -hmm. shooting it right underneath him, right five hole from distance, where it looked like he had a pretty yeah. clean look at it. I don't know. I I didn't like Samson off tonight. I would say this: you're definitely giving him the next game in my opinion, like you're mm -hmm. giving him that start against Detroit and it's going to be a hungry Detroit team. They just lost in overtime to Pittsburgh in like a pretty crucial mm -hmm. game. Uh, I think the Islanders and Canadians, as we're speaking right now, are tied at twos. Like there's a lot mm -hmm. to play for, for those teams down the stretch. But I think that if he plays really poorly in that game and then you've got stakes against Florida for home ice advantage, you might be going back to wall and giving him a chance to steal it. Mm, interesting. I think like, it just... Uh, I, I don't know. I, I'm actually so curious about, like, when you talk to just Lee fans about this in general, um, mm -hmm. I think there's still a good amount that are, are believers in Joseph Wall being the guy for game one. Um, I mean, I just, I've, the story of Samsonov from this, from yeah. the talking to his dad over bottles of vodka to now has been, I've bought it. I'm bought it. I want the movie rights. I want the movie rights. I want to see what the hell happened uh, during the stretch because it's been incredible. I think the team probably really like feels like that's a, a positive like momentum that they've all come around Sammy and they believe in Sammy and they've helped Sammy get to this point. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, you're right. Like Saturday night against Detroit, it's your last home game. If Sammy gets that one, uh, maybe you know, maybe next week you do give Martin Jones a game, like just to get him. I think Martin touches. Jones like, will get the game, uh, the final game of the, the back season. to back one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's going to be so. Him we, no so Sammy what. gets like one more chance, really, to like not let this mm -hmm. be the bad taste in your mouth in the regular season, and yep. he needs that big time, big time. Yeah, that's what I mean. I, I think that that's it. Is I'm with you that you don't want to overreact to it, and I think if you're Keith, you downplay it, and in fact. If I was him, I'd probably be hammering my blue line, going like, these guys really let Samsonov down tonight in a sloppy mm -hmm. game and blah, 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 blah. Although I'm guessing that he's not going to burn a bullet tonight again on another Islander, or sorry, another, uh, I, I was thinking yeah. Islanders. Jobo just put Islanders 1-3-2 in the mm -hmm. chat. Another okay. game against the Devils. But um, yeah, I think that you're rolling with him again against the Red Wings. But if he has another shaky game like that, 
I think he forces your hand to be looking at Wolf, mm -hmm. which is the crazy thing is that I, I really did think that based on Samsonov's play, he had kind of solidified the net. But it goes to show you that uh, when, you, when you have that kind of a season that he's had, the trauma just yeah. it, it doesn't go away. And it reminds everybody that the leash is very, very short for these guys. I had Corey Schneider on my podcast today, and we were talking about like, mm -hmm. you know, goaltending politics and how difficult this kind of time of year is. And I, I really said, I there's nothing I wish that we would get more is a F1 style show with goaltenders oh, where yeah. it was just behind the, the mask. Exactly. Just like the That's actual, cool. what it's like for goalies in a situation like this, where they're do or die for contracts, for ice time, for the me most meaningful games in hockey. Uh, I, I still think it's a fascinating question. Uh, and you were a goalie. I can't believe it. Like I never could have done it. It's, you're one, insane. Though. You're all nuts. No, yeah, no, no. This is the thing. I, it, the only reason that I was a goalie is because I started hockey a year later than my two best friends. And they were better than me, so I was like, "I'll be goalie." <laughs> and was... then did they? And then they wouldn't score on you. But you, you're like the the people love you when you're a goalie because you're the such a good like. Oh, we need a goalie for Shinny, and you'll come out and you'll save the day. But yeah, the yeah there's no other hockey. benefits of being a, a goalie. Like your parents no. probably hated. It just I your gut. Just everyone watches, thinking like, "Well, oh, Spunkus' is fault." Spunkus uh, is fault. And guess what? A lot of times it was my fault. And yeah, yeah, I, yeah, do, yeah. I, I do. I do know that my poor sweet mother you know mm -hmm. getting older you start to think about your parents more as like adults and human beings in the world rather than just like your parents and yeah being uh i i don't think i would wish being a goalie parent on too many people uh no especially like no, you know, no. equipment costs and stuff like that my god uh anything else mm -hmm. from this game from you no i think we covered it honestly like the okay. domi the domi stuff has been really exciting to watch with matthews yep. um obviously the next couple games with the 70 watch marner contract off season these were all just kind of like the bigger picture yep. things i was thinking about um and then yeah sammy like for a game that really didn't have much going for it for the for like the storylines coming in other than matthews i think we got a, a couple good looks at at some things for the maple leafs and um yeah, I mean, good luck with the next three games, guys. You'll find something to talk about. You got yeah. Matthews no, and 70. Lots. So we got lots. So chasing 70 is always gonna be fun. And yeah, the only thing will be that, you know, like game 82. I'm I'm basically gonna be like, if all the leafs are off and it's set, I'll be like, uh, I'd like to also have that game off. Load management. I'd like us to have mm -hmm. load management from that game. You deserve uh, it. I, you do enough got, of these. I got two rapid fire things. One is just mm -hmm. that camp goal was beautiful. And every once in a while, David right? Camp scores a beautiful goal. <laughs> like it's he is it's probably because he's the fittest man in the world. Like he's something incredible. has to come from that besides being like on a calendar. You have to have one goal a year where you get to show that you're like the fittest uh, athletic man in the world. There he is. Look David Camp truly makes me hate my body. <laughs> oh. like I, I hate seeing David Camp without a shirt on. I mm -hmm. think it, it pains me to know that I could, Let there's nothing go. I could do to ever be that. But yeah, he just, if for a guy who is a depth checking line center that is not known for any goal scoring ability it is funny that just once in a while he's able to pot one of these beauties my only and last final thing and i'm glad that i get to talk about this with you is they had a roadie on amarov uh tribute oh, during the game yeah. tonight uh it was really Sorry. difficult obviously to see his family uh like mm -hmm. but i i will say this um you and i were at con smythe together and we were there watching uh daryl sittler and dave tiger williams talk about Shanahan and what he has done for the Leafs organization in terms of just the the care that he has for others and I know Shanahan gets crushed all the time and I like I've crushed Shanahan and I feel like you know he has not gotten his fair share of the blame in a lot of the Leafs failures um and yeah he's done a good job at kind of making himself a hidden figure at the convenient times and you mm -hmm. know I think he owns a lot of the over empowerment of Kyle Dubas and during that era, like a lot of the failures of this team fall on him. But one thing that I was thinking about tonight when I was watching that tribute, knowing that, you know, this guy made sure that his family was flown in to still feel like they're members of the Toronto Maple Leaf family. Um, that echoed what those former vets were saying about how much Shanahan has legitimized the alumni of the Toronto Maple mm -hmm. Leafs, has brought together the community of former Leafs players and families and how much attention to detail he actually has for those touches. And so, yes, mm -hmm. a lot of strength by Amarov's family to be showing up and doing that. Great gesture by the fans who, you know, really understood the moment. Um, but, yeah, I do got to give a lot of credit to Brennan Shanahan for 
being the kind of guy who understands the power of that and who really has fostered uh, community when it comes to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah, I mean, I can speak pretty personally on this uh, with Brendan Shanahan because I, for I, people don't really know who I am. Hi, um, I last year was uh, the in arena host for the Maple Leafs, and so it's a it's a quick kind of like fleeting job. I did it uh, while Danielle Emanuel was on maternity leave. And so you don't really get any time to have like a relationship with anyone in the building. You go on, you're on screen, you leave. And um, but I will say, I, I shared something quite personal in my life uh, a couple months ago. And Brendan Shanahan reached out to me and sent me a really, really personal uh, and meaningful message about what I shared. And he's like, we didn't have to do that. We don't. I don't work there anymore. I mean, I never really got a a chance to to spend time in front of office like I was just a, I was just a girl doing the clap your hands you know and I just thought they didn't it, it call meant, you and it'd be like it's deadline time Ayla she's like what do you think what do you think like, who needs? do you think we should trade for and I said <laughs> uh Ryan O'Reilly <laughs> ah that one worked Good out idea. but yeah. I just was like you know that's that's class that's somebody that understands mm -hmm. um that people are you know people make a part of a relationship in your company and I worked there for one season and never really had so many like personal interactions with him but you know just to go out of your way as the president of, of the Leafs to have time to write out you know a really mm -hmm. long heartfelt message I thought was really uh really a good indicator of what you're talking about like you mm -hmm. know we can talk all about wins and losses and playoff success and whatever but I I think there is credit to be for some of that about hopefully what it means to be a Maple Leaf or a Maple Leafs fan or someone that, that covers the Maple Leafs. Like, I think that that was a nice touch. Um, and, and I know what Rodion Amarov, family, probably, I couldn't even imagine what they went through, but to get that moment to celebrate uh, their son uh, mm -hmm. in front of a crowd that clearly rose to the occasion. Like those are things that obviously Brendan Shannon and the front office know are important to like the Leafs brand. Yeah, mm -hmm. and winning's also very important, and, and nothing will make Leaf fans happier than a Stanley Cup. But yeah, those are nice touches, and they deserve to be appreciated. So, respect. Yeah, they are. They are. I think he did, he did a good job tonight. So did Leafs fans. So kudos to you. And people know who you are. Uh, you're Ailish Forfar. And uh, again, if you want to follow Ailish's show and uh, everything she does, it's at Ailish Forfar on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, you can listen to her every single day at six o'clock. Uh, you can watch her as well on television, big TV star, cross-platform superstar. Okay. You know who you are. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Ailish Forfar at JD Bunkus. Uh, reach out anytime. Uh, leave a mm -hmm. thumbs up, a comment. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe and review. If you're watching on Apple and Spotify, uh, thanks so much for listening. Thanks so much for watching. We will see you on Saturday night. Bye guys. <laughs>